Hey guys, today I'm out at the Head of the Red Rifle Range in outside of Breckenridge, Minnesota. It's a nice shooting range. Uh, there's probably not a lot of you in the area, but if anybody is, it's a nice shooting range. Um, it's about an hour south of Fargo, North Dakota. And it, uh, it's like 20 bucks a year. They got a 50, 25, 100, 200, and then a 500 meter range. And they got nice covered concrete benches. So I'm out here today and we're going to test our, this is uh, my custom I'm going to shoot this first because I'm swapping scopes. But I'm just going to shoot a quick group with this thing. And it's a little windy here. There's probably a, I don't know, maybe a 10 mile an hour crosswind. So we'll fire off the group and we'll go take a look at this. All right, so let's run down there and I only shot three shots, good enough for today, so we'll check it out. Alrighty, so there's my group, not that great, but like, probably almost an inch. I'm gonna try that again and we'll uh, check it out. Alright, so there's our second group with my um, custom Mauser. This is my first shot, these are the second two shots, so... Um, it's not doing the greatest today, it usually shoots a little tighter than that, but... We'll do the other rifle, shoot a few groups, and check that thing out. Maybe that'll shoot a little better today. All right, so I actually just noticed that somebody put a 200-yard gong down there. So, I mean, this is kind of like shooting fish in a barrel, but I'm going to take a shot at it and see if I can spin it a little bit. Shouldn't be much of a... It's like a, somebody, it's like a two and a half foot disc. Somebody must be shooting barns or something. Bing. Well, that was fun. All right, time for the other rifle. All right, so we have, uh, I sighted this guy in and I took uh, four shots and I kind of walked him in. I took my time and it actually was looking pretty promising with those 95 grain nozzlers. I had some left over from before. So what we did since last time is we basically free floated the barrel and I did run a little JB bore uh, compound through the bore. I didn't do it very much uh, and I'm not gonna really cover it because it's pretty boring and. And if you want to do it to your rifle, you can buy it. It's JB Bore Compound, and the directions are right on the back. You can just follow them, and you'll get pretty good results. Two five-round sets of 85-grain burgers. I got one five-round set of 95-grain Hornet A SSTs, and then the 105A Maxes again. So I'm going to shoot five shots, let it cool down completely, shoot another five, cool down, so on and so forth. So this will be my first shot with the Burger 85s. And uh, the point of impact in all these will probably change a little bit, but I should be pretty close to, to where I want to hit. And we're not really looking for point of impact, we're just looking for group size here. Uh, and I'm much more comfortable today than I was last time. This is a, I like this range, it's open, it's, I got some wind, but that's okay, I can deal with wind. I got a nice rear rest, and I, I think I'm good to go today. So let's shoot a few rounds and, and see how it goes. All right, so for the purpose of just having a complete data set, I did shoot all five. And this is my, I had one, two, three, and then two more landed right in here. Um, so not the greatest. Direct my two targets here. <laughs> but, um, so we're gonna go back, let the barrel cool, and we'll shoot those other two groups. All right, so now I'm gonna try the 95 grain Hornet SSTs, and hopefully these will shoot a little better. off a minute here. All right, last two to this group. Yep. All right, that was an interesting group. So I got a, my uh, the vertical is very little, but my horizontal is quite a bit, and we had some it was blowing quite a bit earlier and it's not blowing so good now, so um, might have been a little wind factor there. Let's go take a look. All right, last round with the 105s. I'm just gonna blast through these. My barrel's cool right now, so hopefully I can get through five without getting too hot. 
but we will see what happens here. Hopefully these shoot better. I sped the load up a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Looks good. I should have actually uh, brought a wind flag today too. I didn't think about it till I got here. <laughs> Barrel's getting a little warm. These 105s are I'm running them a little hot. I'm just gonna look at the primer here and see. That's a mild load. It's getting up there, but this is such a light barrel, it gets so hot so quick, so it's kind of a pain. But I just shot two through the same hole, so that's promising. I got a pretty good group going down there. I'm going to let this thing cool off because I don't want to wreck it. <laughs> All right, last two with the 105s. Let's see if I can keep my nice little group going down there. Yep. <laughs> One more. Don't jinx it. That's pretty crazy. I'll have to go ahead and take a look at this group. All right, take a look at that. That's exciting. So that's four in the same hole. And I, had, I think that was my second shot or my third shot. But look at that. That's that's pretty crazy. That's a good group in uh, any rifle. And I had the flyer there. But if you could make your gun shoot like that all the time, that'd be amazing. All right, guys. So there we go. That was pretty exciting that we were able to get that group out of this rifle. Um, now the next step with it would be to go out and load that same uh, cartridge again, uh, same powder, same measurement, primer and everything, and go out and shoot one more group. But <clears throat> it's really promising out of this old uh, Mauser rifle, you know, something you buy from a pawn shop, especially something from like the 60s, 70s, you don't expect it to shoot uh, little quarter inch groups. And uh, let's let me tell you exactly what that group was too, hold on a second. Our main group was a little over 300 thousandths, and if we wouldn't have included that flyer, uh, it would have been a really nice group. That flyer could have very well have been me, and I believe it was also a third shot of my string, so the barrel was heating up, uh, but it shouldn't have gotten that far out. Like I said, It'd be nice to go out and prove this again with that same load and then we can see exactly what's going on. But that was a pretty impressive group for, uh, for an old 56-year-old uh, rifle. Uh, and it just goes to show what you can do with a little bit of tuning of these guys. Um, another thing we had working for us here was this is, was an 8-twist barrel, which we were able to shoot some uh, heavier target grade bullets like the 105A Maxes or even uh, some Burgers. And it's when you're testing a rifle like this, especially if you're trying to tune it, it's always good to try a few different bullets and a few different weights. And I was trying a few different powders also to try and hone in on and what I had going on here. What would have been even better is if I would have had a chronograph set up and then I could have seen what was going on with uh, my feet per second, my standard deviation and all that good stuff. And then I could have seen, um, probably would have been able to hone in on that a little quicker. Um, the 105s, I just was kind of going off experience and hoping that bumping my charge up a little would have tightened up that group, which it did. So it was pretty impressive. I was, this is a pretty impressive little rifle now. Uh, so there you go. I think this will probably be a wrap on this thing. There's a few more things you could do, but they're pretty simple. Uh, one of the main things you can do is you can get a a Timney or I think Dayton Trister might even uh, make replacement triggers for these guys. It's pretty simple. Most most of these uh, old military style rifles, it's usually just a drop-in part um, and you're usually good to go. The other thing they make is a speed lock firing pin spring, which you can add to these. Um, that speeds up the lock time, so it theoretically may increase your accuracy a little bit. And then also, um, David Tubb makes a aluminum, 
uh, bodied firing pin for these things that you can get too also. But sometimes those things require a little bit of fitting. They might not work in your application without doing a little filing and fitting because I've, I've bought I've bought them before and I've had some issues fitting them so but when they work they work really well <sighs> all right so I think that's gonna be a wrap on this guy and there's not much else I can do it had been bedded before I got it and whoever bedded it did a fairly decent job so the actions in there are pretty solid uh, we crowned it we floated it we what else did we do? <laughs> I lapped the barrel a little bit with some JB bore compound. Um, not a lot. I just kind of did a few little things that most guys uh, can do at home, uh, minus the crown. But you can. There's other ways of doing that. So yeah, uh, mainly with this guy is just doing load development and trying to figure out what will shoot good. But you got to have the rifle set up before you do that. <clears throat> Most of these rifles like this that I, all the time I always float them, bed them, do a trigger job if I need to, um, and do a muzzle if I need to, and then clean the bore out really well. Uh, if you're building a custom rifle, you can do whatever you want and start wherever you want. You know, you can do the whole shebang, barrel, you can trip the receiver, trip the bolt, trip the lugs, um, you can get a new trigger in there, fine tune your trigger. Um, bed it, float it, and uh, and there's more you can do beyond that, but that's kind of the basics. So, like I said, I think this is going to be a wrap for this guy. I hope you enjoyed that. It was kind of just a little video series on, you know, taking a cheap rifle and trying to make it shoot better. Um, you know, this is something the average guy can go out and buy, spend... 300, 350 bucks, and then you know, spend like 50 bucks on a trigger and a little bit of work yourself, and you have the potential to have you know, a pretty nice shooting rifle. There's a lot of rifles out there that have a lot of potential, it's just most people don't go with the extra effort to make them shoot. And uh, a lot of factory barrels are decent and work all right with um, you know, numerous different bullets and powders and all that good stuff. All right, I've jabbed long enough. So, if you guys like that, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, like in the comment section below, and also be sure to leave a comment for me. I always reply to all the comments I get. And if you'd like to help make more great videos like this, please check out my Patreon account. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can help make awesome videos like this. So. Um, in the near future, I got some other projects coming up. I think I got an extra throw barrel on here one of these days on this guy. Get that guy turning some steel again. And uh, yeah, let's, let's build some more stuff here in the future. And I also got some cool tools I picked up too. So, till next time, be sure to shoot safe and stay safe on your machines. Thanks for watching. So here's just to show how nice and concentric and even, take your time. <laughs>